friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 25th, and boy, fall has fallen here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's cold. Uh, I mean, it's actually warm today relative to yesterday. Yesterday I woke up and it was 46 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Today it is, it was 54 degrees when I woke up, so... Quite a, quite a difference there, but it's still cold. And uh, I wanted to turn a furnace on yesterday. My wife wouldn't let me. Then she she left. She finally got out the door and went to Pittsburgh. Uh, if you didn't see the live stream this Friday, uh, she makes a guest appearance on it. That was a lot of fun. She really enjoyed herself, and you guys were were great. You know, very welcoming and uh, had some great questions for her and all. So that was a, it was a good live stream. If you didn't catch. Uh, the live stream from this past Friday. Uh, I, I recommend you go and check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. So anyway, she finally got out the door. She's she's on her way to, well, she's in Pittsburgh now. She got there uh, yesterday evening. So, and I still haven't turned the furnace on because she told me not to, but it's just cold. I like being down here in the basement because it's the warmest place in the house right now. Anyway, because of the cold, I've done almost nothing this morning. Uh, you know, normally, I, I try to get my outdoor stuff done early and then come and make this video. But uh, it's it's earlier in the morning today. And uh, we're just hunkering down until the sun gets a little higher in the sky. And we'll see how it goes. I'm sorry, I keep looking over here. I didn't move things over for, for the video. But... Yeah, that's where we're at. So uh, among the things I got to do today is I got to get all my fishing gear out and go through it and see what's good, what's not good, uh, clean things up a little bit and get everything ready because this Wednesday I'm actually going to take a day off and go fishing. Um, I love fall trout fishing. I uh, haven't done it in years and, uh, you know, I haven't, I just haven't been out very much uh on the streams just ever since my my illness years ago it just kind of has been hard for me to get back into it but I'm feeling good this year and uh, the spring was weird for fishing it was it was either really really hot or it was raining so it wasn't wasn't any good opportunities for me or I was busy um, summer is usually not great for trout uh, in this area and uh, here we are fall and it's the weather's good enough. It's it's going to rain today, but hopefully uh, Wednesday's looking good. Wednesday's looking sunny and in the 60s, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So, because it's been years, I got to get out. I don't know if my fly lines are, are good. I got to check them over, and, and uh, gotta, I probably have to retie all my leaders, check over my flies. I'm certain I've got all the flies I need, uh, but I just want to check and I keep some in boxes that do not go with me so I might have to restock the boxes that do go with me it's um and it's been so long that I'm, I'm trying to remember you know what exactly do I need and what yeah, it's funny this I used to fish a lot I used to, to fish throughout the year uh weather didn't matter to me I mean, one of my well, I didn't fish in the rain that's just silly but um, I, one of my favorite memories is standing in the little Lehigh in February, uh, with, with snow falling and flurries, you know, it wasn't like a blizzard, not that stupid, but, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, and what I remember most about that day is how the guides kept icing up. You, you, you'd bring in your line and water on the line would get onto the guides, the rod guides, line guides on the rod. And then you'd you know be whipping the thing back and forth, and it was cold enough that it was just forming ice on the guides, and you get to a point where you go to cast, and nothing would happen. I'm like ah, oh. <laughs> and you got two choices: you can go and break them off, you know, just like go along with your fingers and knock the ice off, and then it'll cast fine, or you can put the rod into the water, which will melt the ice pretty quickly, and that works great, except then the whole rod is wet and the whole rod ices up. Well, I learned that the hard way. But that was a fun day. Caught nothing. 
but it's a great memory. By the way, I've got my uh, some J Mouton billiard, and I am smoking some of that Ken Byron Fireside Chat. Thank you again, Eric. Yeah, it's um, it's a blend that I still haven't come to terms with, to be honest. It's still very Carter Hall like to me, and you know, a big part of me is saying, "Well, I've got Carter Hall. Why do I want this?" But it does have that woody smokiness to it that I really like. Fairly comfortable, but there's that that topping that's just not agreeing with me. And I made the comparison to McBaron last time, and Eric got in touch and said, "There's no McBaron in that." So, <laughs> so there's no McBaron in it, but. Uh, the topping is very reminiscent of that McBaron honey bitey topping. But if you're not sensitive to topping, it's a, it's a very pleasant blend, very comfortable blend. I was talking to my buddy uh, Everett, the Urban Hermit, yesterday, last night, and uh, he suggested that I take it with me on Wednesday and just see if the experience of being in the outdoors and stuff in any way affects the experience of smoking the blend. And I thought that's a, that's a great idea. Of course, I will take plenty of haunted bookshop and a cigar. My my tradition is I I take a cigar with me. I don't smoke it until I get back to the car, and I light it up when I get back to the car. And I'm you know breaking things down and loading them up, and then I'll smoke it on the way home. I'll take a briar to smoke in the car, and uh, then I always have a cop with me to to go on the stream. There's another thing I have to do. I have to look through my cobs because I haven't smoked them in a long time, and a couple of them the stems have gotten loose. You know, I've had I smoke them down here a lot, and I've actually had experience where I'm, I'm I got the pipe in my mouth and I bend over to pick something up and the the bowl falls off the stem. <laughs> Fortunately, they're just cops, you know. If only I knew someone that could make a stem for them. So another challenge that I've got in terms of getting back on the stream is that I've lost so much weight that I know for a fact my waiters aren't going to fit. Um, they'll be ridiculous, you know. <laughs> But that's okay, because I rarely wade, um, certainly the stream I'm going to, I'm going to go to Valley Creek. Uh, I could, in most places, you can walk across Valley Creek without going below your waist, uh, going above your waist. Um, I very, very rarely wade above my knees. And I have, um, I think they're called gaiters, I can't remember. But these waders that you, you put on both legs, they're, they're like, they're like individual legs of a pair of pants rather than uh, the full waders that come up to your chest. So I'll use those. And uh, wading boots, of course. And I'll, I'll just, it's a small stream, so I've, I know which fly rod I'll take. I've got a little uh, three weight that I built that I like. It's a nice little whippy thing that lets me place the fly exactly where I want it. It's, it's, it's small. It's only a seven and a half foot, but I can I can cast in tight spots with that really well. And I overline them. You folks that aren't fly fishermen have no idea what I'm talking about. So it's a three weight rod. I'll put a four weight line on it. And that just helps it because it's shorter. It helps it load better uh, so I can get more casting distance out of it when I need it. But the truth is I rarely need that. Uh, I do a lot of roll casting and things like that on, on the stream. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. I'll try to take some pictures, maybe even do a little bit of video. We'll see. If the stars really align, I could, in theory, since it is Wednesday, I could do one of my roadway ramble type things. Uh, but nah, it's not going to happen. 
<laughs> it's just not going to happen. I, that, that video equipment that I used for the, the outside camera, uh, I have it all. I found the SD card that I was missing, so, so that's great. But yeah, it's very unlikely that I'm going to get that all together in time. The other thing that I'm fighting today is that it's going to rain. It's going to start raining here around 2 o'clock. So I got to get everything outside and check it out and do a little practice casting in the yard just to not really to practice because I'm going to be terrible, but just to make sure everything's where it needs to be. And then I can do stuff like tie leaders. I, I can do that between now and Wednesday in the house. Leader material, most people tell you you need to throw away your leader material every year and buy new stuff. Um, I keep mine in the dark, you know, I keep it in a, in a, in a box, in a drawer, and I've never had problems with it. I have gotten some old leader material, like friends, older friends say, you know, here's a box of stuff I don't use if you want it, and I'll say sure, and there'll be some leader material in that, and you can just snap it very easily in your hand. But I've had stuff for 10 years, and as long as you don't let it out in the sun, it's okay. And I'm not catching giant fish either. You know, the, these the streams I fish, you're, you know, that's a big fish. Of course, when I talk about it, it gets this big, but you know, if I'm honest, it's, that's a big fish. And they all go back. You know, I don't, I don't keep anything. I don't want to keep anything. Actually, you can't in Valley Creek because the creek's contaminated. Interesting story, actually. There was a PCB spill. PCBs are used in electronics. Uh, they're, they're basically a coolant, I think, that goes into things like capacitors and stuff. Um, there was a spill back in the 70s that contaminated the stream, and they stopped stocking it because of that, and they, you know, said you, you can't take any fish from this. They're, they're contaminated. And while that's a terrible thing environmentally, um, what happened is the, fit, the, the brown trout in that stream thrived. And there's a lot of them, and they're happy, and you can't take them. So the, the population never decreases. And they're not stocking it, so you don't get the opening day frenzy where you get these people with stringers of, you know, 50 trout and everything else. I mean, it just doesn't happen there. So these fish kind of live peacefully. And if you want to fly, it's fly fish only, I believe. No, no, it's not fly fish only. Um, but because you can't take the fish, most bait fishermen or spin cast fishermen don't go there. Uh, you do occasionally see them. And the folks that are fishing that stream are usually pretty serious fly fishermen because it's hard. Brown trout are probably the hardest trout to catch. They're very smart. They're very spooky. There's people walking by a lot, so they often get spooked. You know, you, you can be fishing over, over a, a, a rising school and somebody runs by on the, on the jogging trail and those fish are down for an hour. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's, it's technically really a difficult place to fish. I love that. You know, that, that to me is the, is the challenge. And I don't care how big the fish is or how, you know, how many I catch. For me, it's the challenge, the puzzle of trying to figure out how I'm going to get that fish to take that fly and, and get him into my hand. And then let him go back on his merry way to be caught another day. So that's pretty much what I got in store today. I still have to clean up the yard, comb the dogs, brush the dogs. Um, and because my wife's away, I got to feed myself, which is always a little dicey. I did some cooking yesterday. We have um, we have a CSA. I never remember what CSA stands for, but you basically buy a share in a, in a local farm, and you get every we do it every two weeks. You get a big 
bin of vegetables uh, that they grow. And there's some there's some neat stuff too, like the the one that we uh, use has uh, flowers that they grow. So you can go and uh, during the season, uh, you can go out and pick flowers and you know, have flower arrangements. Uh, they also have herb gardens where you can go and pick. I, I think you're allowed to get, I don't know how they do the herbs, uh, but I'll, I'll occasionally do that. You know, we've had some unusual things like chocolate mint, which is really quite unique. Uh, it does actually taste like chocolate mint. Um, it, we, we've gotten some, some thyme and parsley, and uh, I've actually taken some chamomile this year and made some chamomile tea with it, which was interesting to make it, you know, pick it off the plant and actually drink it that night. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah, this, anyway, this the CSA gives us this big basket of vegetables every two weeks, and we try our best to use them, but you get to a point where, you know, how many summer squash and eggplant can you eat in two weeks' time? So what I like to do is the, the days prior to the weekend, prior to the next CSA, I'll go through the fridge and just take everything out that's not going to get used, and I'll make... Uh, what some people might call a ratatouille, uh, I call it a vegetable stew because I'm not French <laughs> and it's not sophisticated enough. But uh, yeah, so I did that yesterday. You know, I've got a big pot of this stuff. It's, it's eggplant, zucchini, uh, tomatoes, peppers, all that. And it's great because you can eat it like a soup. You can put it on pasta if you want. You can put it over rice. It, uh, yeah, I like it. My wife doesn't eat it. So. And yeah, so I'm going to have that for a couple of days. I'm thinking about, we've got some basil that we got uh, last time. And I'm probably going to turn that into a pesto tonight. And I make pesto ridiculously simple. I've got a one of these uh, high power blenders. I can't think of what it's called right now. It'll come to me. And you throw in the basil, you throw in some garlic, you throw in some oil and you hit buzz. And uh, you got yourself some pesto. Uh, I know you're supposed to put nuts and cheese in it. Um, I'm a I'm a barbarian. Vitamix, that's the name of the blender. Good blender, by the way. If you, if you ever ever in the market for a blender, that thing can. You know, I sometimes make uh, protein shakes with uh, some bone broth protein that has its flavor. It's like a chocolate bone broth, uh, just really good stuff. And one of the issues I've come up with in the past year or two is, is getting enough protein because of the way we've been eating. So I'll make a shake with this bone broth powder and I'll put some oatmeal in it and a half of an apple. And, and you know, you can just, you can literally just cut the apple in half and drop it in there, core seeds, everything. And you would not know there was an apple in it. Well, you would t you taste the apple, but there's not like seeds or any fibers or anything. It just blends everything into a smooth, uh, drinkable mixture. So Vitamix, good thing. Well, folks, I am babbling at this point about blenders, and I think you've probably heard all you want to hear from me. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Hope you have a great Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.